morning, dear church, and welcome to this blessed week, the final week in June, and um, welcome to our Sunday recap. Um, yesterday in our prayers, we lifted up uh, a number of different things. In Thanksgiving, we lifted up the prayers, uh, we lifted up um, the community, our community here in Coloma. Um, it was Chicken Chew weekend, and the church served um, just over 200 people on Friday evening for our fish dinner, and we give thanks for that ministry. Um, even though we ask for um, donations for food, um, um, we or tickets for the plate, um, it's still a ministry in some respects, um, and so we give thanks that we have that ability to be able to offer food to the community um, and we give thanks for the work of the fire department, our emergency response personnel, and um, the Lions Club that they do. And so we lift up those ministries this weekend as we um, celebrate um, Chicken Chew Weekend. Also in our prayers, we lift up lifted up those um, that are dealing with the earthquakes in Afghanistan, as well as in Ethiopia, where a civil war is disrupting life there. And so we lift up those people. We had a request for a prayer for Karen, and then we also lift up those um, with dealing with Roe versus Wade, those that are feeling grief because of it, and also those that are um, feeling joy or a sense of relief uh, from it. We lift up all people um, and their need to for their voice to be heard, so that way we may come together in unity uh, instead of finding divisiveness. And so we lift up all people this day um, and all days in our prayers. This morning, we're going to begin, um, as we did on Sunday, um, using confession and forgiveness. This is the traditional familiar confession, and so I invite you to join uh, in that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Dear ones, God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts. You call us to obey you, and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading this weekend is from the book of uh, 1 Kings, beginning at chapter 19, verse 15. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Meloha, as prophet in your place. So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. There were twelve yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done for you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them, using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. 
they set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Galatians chapter 5. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the, de the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you as I warned you before. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Dear ones, the Holy Gospel this week, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, he entered the village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him because he, his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his, when his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear ones, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our second reading today is again from Galatians. So we're going to continue this week with our theme that we've got picking up in Galatians about abiding in Christ. Last week I made mention, and I think we showed the banner off to my left over here that says abide in Christ always. And that's sort of our theme over the next couple weeks. And then we have this banner that was put up over here this week of the resurrected cross. And it's a reminder of where our forgiveness comes from where we receive wholeness and healing. And so to complete sort of that trio, we have behind me here um, this banner, the banner that has all of our fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, 
This banner uses the translation of goodness, um, but in our reading today, it was generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And we look at these fruits of the Spirit as to how we use them to guide our lives as disciples. Now, it would be a lot of fun, wouldn't it, to go through the desires of the flesh, fornication and impurity and licentiousness and anger and envy and enmities and strife and jealousy. You know, it would be interesting to unpack those. It might be easier to unpack those and to look at those, but we're not going to go there because we have so much of that in our lives that we're going to look at the fruits of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. Now, it should be said that these are not something that are easily come by. We don't always have all of these easily within our grasp. There may be days where we only succeed at one of those, and but we try. You know, we may try to do all of these, but we can only succeed at one of them. Maybe only one of them comes easily to you, and that's okay. You know, a number of years ago, we, as a, a staff for the church that I was working at, um, looked at our uh, strengths, and mine included input and belief and positivity and woo, and I can't remember the other one at the moment. Um, and these are my strengths. These are what um, really I do well at. But that doesn't mean I always get them right all of the time. I struggle with them from time to time. And one of the things that gets in the way, one of those things that um, that that hinders me from succeeding at my strengths is anxiety. I deal with anxiety. I am an anxious person, and it has actually caused some issues in my life. I was let go from a job because I was anxious. Being an extroverted person and a person that's riddled with anxiety does not go well. And so I would, somebody would say something that I didn't agree with, and right away I would snap and I would beyond their case. And it doesn't go well, because when you react like that, when you are reactionary, when you're anxiety ridden, um, it causes walls to be put up. You know, another thing that I have being an extrovert is I have to be able to process things uh, out loud. And I know that our council has witnessed this uh, time or two. Um, and so sometimes people are like, whoa, he's angry. This is too much. But it's not that I'm angry. It's that I have to process. But that's also something that I have to work at because it's not comfortable when you've got somebody that just is spewing, spewing words at you trying to make sense. Um, and that doesn't help the other party either. And so we all have things like this that we have to work at, that we've got to come to terms with. And it's not something that we can just as easily flip a switch and it changes and we're perfect. And so the fruit of the Spirit, we're given these, these fruit, uh, as Paul says, um, to live our lives by. And uh, we are called to work at them each and every day. And so we are told, as the banner says, if we abide in Christ, we live in the resurrection, in the newness of life through which we have received forgiveness of sin. We will be made new and we will be able to accomplish these things. And we won't succeed at these each and every day. As we know, the Bible tells us that we have all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God, but we are justified by faith and saved with grace, the grace of God. And so we can try each and every day to attain and to use these gifts. And if we don't, it's okay. Because as long as we abide in Christ and we dwell in the resurrection, we have a new day to try and get these again. And so we look at our reading today. And in verse 16, it says, live by the spirit and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. And so I was looking at this text in Greek, and the first part of 16 is the imperative. And so the, the way they have it um, translated, and do not desire and do not gratify the desires of the flesh, in this instance would be um, better um, translated as, live by the Spirit, I say, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. That makes it a little bit easier, doesn't it? I think it is. Um, when you live by the Spirit, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Unfortunately, 
that's not you know always a hundred percent true because the evil one is always uh, ready to get in at any at any point, and so we let our guard down for just a moment, right? And um, anything, one of these, can go awry. And thanks be to God that we have a Savior that has risen and died and risen for us and saves us from all sin. So let's unpack uh, this bundle of fruit, if you will. First, we have love. Where do we find love in our lives? You know, we have love for our spouse, for our partner, for our children, for our neighbors, for our parents and grandparents, for our friends, for different things. We have a love for God's creation. We have a love for our community. Where do we find love? And I encourage us to look beyond just the basic, to go a bit deeper, to dig a bit deeper and find ways that we can find radical love. Places where we might disagree with something, but we can still find an area to love. And as I pointed out yesterday, these are all linked together. And so they all play together. You know, it's like that bunch of grapes. There is that one, that one um, sort of main, clump, main stem, but each has its own little fruit there. And they, they all are a part of a whole. And so we have love. Where do we find love? Where did we show love? Where is love present? joy. Where do we find joy? You know, in a congregation, sometimes it's hard to find joy, um, but that means we are missing even the littlest of things. For this instance, here in Coloma, um, we find joy in the fact that we served over 200 meals on Friday, that we have the ability to do that, that we have members that can provide different things. Even if it's just a pound of butter, we have members that can do that. We find joy that we have people that their opportunity, their gift that they can give to the church is praying for people. And so when Shelly sends out those reminders that this person needs prayer, or this person has died, we should pray for that family, we can offer that gift of prayer. And what a joy that is that we have that capacity. We have that ability here to do that. Or the joy that we can offer our space to further our mission. We can provide a safe space, as we often do, I think, what, four times a year, to for the Red Cross to come in so they can set up a blood drive here in Coloma. What a great gift that is, that we have been blessed with this space to offer a safe space to come and donate blood. Or the joy that we partner with South Burr Oak, the Methodist Church, and we offer a safe place for children to come, for youth to come and experience God in a new way during Vacation Bible School. You know, this is nothing new for this church. These two things are nothing new. But what a wonderful gift it is that we have the space, we have the ability to offer a safe space to experience God in a new way. What a joy that is. But it goes beyond that, because what a joy we have, even for the most basic thing, to come together to worship or to be able to share the message of Christ together in this way, in a digital platform. What joy it is that we can do that and expand the message of the church. And peace. How are we promoting peace in our world? And again, we're not always going to agree. We may not always agree on everything that comes out. But how can we promote peace? Just as I have to work on listening more, because, you know, when I get anxious, when I uh, get too extroverted and I start uh, spewing too much, when I'm trying to process things, that can build a wall. And part of creating peace is listening to the other. Taking a step back for a moment and listening, taking time to comprehend and understand, and then speaking. Where are we creating peace? And it's difficult. <clears throat> In our world today, isn't it? It's difficult to try and find a way to create peace, to try and find peace. 
but it has been done and it can continue to be done. And so we live in joy that the church is one of the places where we can help to promote peace. We can be an example of peace and patience. How have we exuded patience? It may be with a rambunctious child, with a child that's just upset. How do we exude patience? Because we don't know what they're going through. We don't know what's going on. And so taking the patience to try to understand what's going on, to allow that child to express themselves, to that person that, you know, should be thinking like an adult, but, you know, that they're acting like a child. So how do we take a step back from snapping and being angry at them and exhibit patience with them and allow them to come along? Or anybody that walks into this door that may not know Jesus, that may think that this is how things uh, work. You know, we didn't come to Jesus in a flip of a switch. It has, It is and always has been an ongoing process. So how do we exhibit patience with people that we meet? And kindness. Are we showing kindness to our neighbors? You know, again, in joy, we celebrate that we uh, have a place that we can open up, and this congregation is kind enough to offer their space to people that meet their mission goals, to fulfill their mission. Living out the love of God shows kindness to others. And the banner behind me says goodness, um, but generosity. Where are we good to others? Where are we generous to the neighbor? You know, sometimes it's going to take a lot of energy but we are rewarded when we show generosity, when we are good to the neighbor, when we show hospitality. You know, sometimes we get all bent up in arms. Well, this person come and took a huge plate of food and the fellowship should be for all people. But we don't know if that person has had uh, a meal that day or if they're getting a meal that day or even if they've had a meal the last day or so. We are generous with the gifts that we have been given, and God will, God will abundantly bless us. And faithfulness. Have we been faithful to who we are? Have we been faithful to God and the mission that God sets us forth? Have we been faithful to these fruit of the Spirit and done the best that we can? That doesn't mean that we're always going to succeed. Mm -mm. But we do our best in faith to live out the mission of Christ and gentleness. Where have we shown gentleness to each other? Where are we seeing gentleness? You know, I saw a picture where um, two rival groups were meeting during a protest and one side came up and just clocked another when they were trying to break up a fight somebody from the other side came and clocked another person right in the face as they were trying to break up that fight. We don't always agree. We're not always going to agree. But how do we show gentleness in all of that? How do we show love? How do we nurture? Where are we seeing gentleness in this world? And finally, self-control. You know, on Saturday, driving back from Appleton, my daughter will tell you I did not exhibit self-control. Three times, I got stuck behind uh, vehicles that were doing 40 in a 55. And I will tell you, I was a little bit irritated because it was like, I just want to get home. And it was like, go 55. And I was a bit angry. So how do we exhibit self-control? Even when you're in the car alone or with a child, how are we exhibiting self-control? How are we taking that deep breath and saying it's going to be okay? And so, dear brothers and sisters, as we continue to go about our journey in discipleship, trying to figure out what God has in store for us now here in 2022, how do we continually practice using the fruit of the Spirit in our daily lives? And yesterday, you would have seen on Facebook that I posted a bunch of um, red pieces of paper with nothing on it. Um, but when you turn it around, 
um, it was those questions and the verse about the fruit of the Spirit. And um, these are just questions that I came up with throughout the week that you can ask yourself. But I invite you to take one when you are at church next, stick it in your mirror or in your devotional book, and ask yourself in the morning or at night, how are you going to show? How did you show? How did, where did you see each of these used during your day? And use that as your guide the next, well, forever. Um, use that as your guide each day to try and understand uh, where you've done well and where you need to work a little more. Because there's no shame in admitting that, you know what, I need a little bit more work here. I need to work on that a little bit more. Because we all do. And thanks be to God that we are given a community together of faith. That we can work on that together. And so, dear ones, live by the fruit of the Spirit, abiding in Christ, claiming your forgiveness in the resurrected Jesus. And I give thanks for you this day and the work that you do, living out the fruit of the Spirit each day in this community. Amen. And so together with the church and united in Christ, we lift up our prayers for all. God of faithfulness, set the face of your church firmly on you, rooted in your self-giving love. May the church find freedom in loving our neighbors. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of gentleness, strengthen the earth's ability to heal. Where there are dangerous storms, bring calm. Where there are destructive fires, bring rain. Protect homes and habitats and livelihoods threatened by climate disasters. God of grace, hear our prayer. And God of peace, guide all who govern that they place the good of their citizens above self-promotion. Appoint leaders of nations with your spirit of neighborly love. Protect refugees and all who live under tyranny or conflict. Especially, we continue to pray for Ukraine and Russia as the, those people there seek to find peace. And we pray for the people of Afghanistan dealing with an earthquake and the people in civil war in Ethiopia. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of kindness, reveal your healing presence to all who are sick or dying. And just today we lift up Karen and all people that are dealing still with the effects of COVID and the number of people here in our own community that are seeking healing and recovery from disease and illness. Uphold, we pray, all those who grieve. Support the needs of any who are unemployed or hungry or have nowhere to lay their heads. God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of love, attend those who struggle with addiction, depression, or uncontrolled anger. Provide support systems and loving companions as they work toward health, that they may rest in hope until the and uh, rest in hope and know the fullness of joy in your presence. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of gentleness. We lift up those who are grieving because of the ruling with Roe versus Wade. And we pray with those who are celebrating this as a victory. Be with all people that we may tear down barriers and work together in unity towards the true meaning and hope of your gospel, learning to love all of life and supporting all decisions. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of joy, we give thanks for all who have died and now celebrate the inheritance of life in you. Keep their examples of fullness always before us, that we trust your promises in life and in death. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts, keeping them and giving them to you. Amen. And now let us pray the words that our Savior has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. And receive the final blessing. The God of peace, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and comfort you and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Dear ones, go in peace and love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.